Hey guys, uh, so welcome to this video. We're going to be going over our streaming settings and showing you some of the best ways to set up your uh, stream if you run AMD. And also I am going to show you a couple trips, a couple tips, I'm sorry, about uh, multi-streaming when it comes to YouTube, Twitch, and also just how to do that without having to run through services like Restream. Um, I, do not, I do not have a good alternative for Restream when it comes to the chat and activity feed setups. It at the moment, from what I can tell, is one of the best options. Um, but when it comes to actually streaming to those platforms, it's not really worth it in my opinion. So we're gonna be going over that in a minute. Um, and then we're also going to go over Twitch bot tracks and also setting it to where when you record, having your mic go to a separate track than your audio so you can actually have a little bit more control over your audio on your recording. So let's get into it. Okay, as you can see, I we're on my settings tab now. I have my OBS and a vertical layout on the left. I don't really want to try to drag that over because that becomes a whole mess. So we're just gonna drag over our things that need to be seen onto the main monitor. So starting here, we have our general tab. We, I'm running English, obviously. I, it's my only language I speak. And uh, theme, I'm running Yami. So I really like Yami. You can mess with these as you want. This is my favorite. I can really recommend it. Um, and then obviously you wanna keep your updates. I would honest, just keep your update channel to stable, latest stable release. Never had an issue. And all honesty though, I've kept mine basic uh, to the default. I've not actually touched these. This is really just where I keep it. Um, and then going from there. So we're gonna go to our stream tab. Quick interjection afterwards. Uh, for some reason, I was dumb and had this unchecked and was telling you don't to uncheck it. I always have this checked. I don't know why I didn't all of a sudden. Um, so yes, check this, otherwise anything you set your uh, output encoder settings to is going to be corrected by this and then change it to it. So leave this checked, um, or back to the video. I would leave your uh, service on like something like Twitch or YouTube, server, automatic, and then just do this method, connect the account, it is a lot simpler and I've had no real benefit or con from um, actually running this method and I just overall find it easier. Now, one important setting on this on our stream tab is the if you have this checked, it's only going to send it at five. Uh, it's only going to send it at 6K. That is the max bit rate it, it says it's going to send. So obviously we're going to leave that checked because I, I stream at 8K bit rate. So I obviously want to leave that unchecked so I can stream at 8k Barry. So on here, we're going to be going over um, our encoder settings. We have our audio track set up here. We're not going to be going over this just yet. We are going to come back to this tab when we go over our audio setup. So at the moment, we're running uh, the FM uh, peg audio encoder. I've never had an issue out of this. It ran entirely fine, and I honestly don't see a reason to change it. So obviously, since we're running AMD, we're going to be having to run the H.264 encoder. I can't wait for AV1 to be a bit more adopted, but if you are going to stream to Twitch, AV1 is not accepted yet. Um, and it's honestly, I haven't touched it, so I don't know anything about it. So we're going to leave rescale output unchecked because we are uh, going to be having our video and our canvas at 1080p anyways, and our output is 1080p. So now we get to our encoder settings. We're running CBR, and as I said, 8,000 bit rate, and this is gonna become important later. So as I said, we're going to be going over multi-streaming in this video. 8K is where personally my PC and my internet can multi-stream at and having no issues. I have streamed to YouTube, Twitch, and Kick all at the same time on 8k bitrate and been fine now that doesn't really matter when it comes to the specs of your pc that is also going to come down majorly to your internet um i have 100 down uh 100 up so i have no issue running 8k so i would say figure do a speed test and uh figure out where your uh, high point is and just experiment Moving on to that, we're going to be getting into the stuff to where I don't know a whole lot. In the description below, I'm going to be leaving a link to a Postvox channel 
he does really good explanations of all these things i don't know how they work a whole lot i have not got the attention span to sit through the master class and learn all the things about obs probably should but don't really have the attention span so but from all the research i have done and everything i have seen and also just all my testing keyframes 2 has been the best setting and then obviously preset quality and profile high that has been the best setups so b frames i don't remember what it is but i have tested both one and two and i had the best uh performance and quality out of one b frame and then once we get to the amf options this is stuff that's really important and it will give you access to more settings that you do not have up here like our rate control or bit rate and i will have this in the description so you can just copy and paste it in and we're doing our max reference frames equals four and our heart high motion quality boost enable is one so one it means it's true it means it's enabled so that's our streaming settings now we're on to our recording settings so as you can see, we have recording path set and that's going to be different for you as you can probably guess. I send all my recordings to a drive dedicated entirely to recordings. And then we have our recording format. I recommend MKV wholeheartedly for uh, one main reason. And that is the fact that if this OBS session crashed right now, I would not lose any of my footage besides maybe the last second or two. And even if my entire PC crashed, if I lost power right now, I would still have that footage. And when it comes to our video encoder, I would just run the uh, H.265, not the AV1, because H.265 is what I know. I don't know what I'll, I know the AV1 is going to have a lot of benefits, but I know it's not very adopted. Even though this isn't for streaming, this is just what I know and what my research has told me. I run H.265. I know it is better than 264. Besides that, I don't know really anything. So on to that, our audio encoder for recording is our the FMPEG AAC. As I said before, I wouldn't really touch that. And the audio tracks we're going to explain in a bit. Um, but then we go to our rescale output, 1080p. And as I think I said before, I'm not sure, our base canvas resolution and our output is 1080p. So we will just leave that unchecked and leave it like it is no custom mixer settings and then automatic file splitting that i don't know all i know is that has to do with our uh, file and it naming it but besides that i have no clue so here we get to our encoding settings uh not a lot of people i have seen have been running cqp but from what i have found it seems to be the best setting it has been very reliable i have not had really i one thing i had with cbr is you'd have random parts in the video to where they would drop down bitrate quality this has been very consistent and i've never really had an issue out of it the only thing is it is very very performance heavy um so you want to be very careful with it so for instance i run cq level 18 and this has allowed me to stream on twitch and record at the exact same time no issues but if you have a lower end PC or you're trying to do all these, I would set it to 20. You might be able to go a little higher. I'm not sure. I I know 20 is okay and I know 18 is okay. Anything else than that, I am not sure. Then as we said before, our keyframe interval and preset and our AMF. So now that we're done with that, we're gonna be going over to our audio tab. So here's where we're gonna start explaining those other uh, points and our audio setup in general. So I run Wavelink instead of the uh, Steel Series Sonar or any of that. I don't know how the Sonar works. I know how the Wavelink works. So how I have it set is I have my Desktop Audio 2 as my browser for my music. I have my mic as my mic. Then we have our Wavelink Stream, which has all the combinations of the other stuff. And you'll be wondering, why is my music on its own? So that is because with my current audio setting, I can play music from the beginning of the stream to the end of the stream, non-stop. But when you look at my Twitch VOD, it has no music. When you watch my recording, it has no music. And that is due to this being up here. Um, if you do run Wavelink, you probably know, but I'm going to just give you a quick show. This is how my stuff's currently set up. This is my microphone, we have my game chat, my voice chat, my uh, browser, and my system audio. 
And then anything else here, I have not touched. It is the default settings. It's, I have not touched it. So looking at my streaming, you can see I have audio track two selected. So the stream is going, so the stream, it hears everything on audio track two. The VOD only hears what's on audio track three. And if you look at my recording, it is set to audio track three and four. Now, the reason for that is with this current setup, my microphone, I believe is track three and my uh, game audio is track four. That means when I load it up in my video editing software, I, it has two tracks on it. And if I edit the, I can make the mic louder or the game audio quieter, and I can really tweak my sound to make sure I get it very good. That is something I recommend everyone should be doing makes life so much easier same with the twitch vod so I'll give you an example say if you come from the rp community like i do and you played music in your stream but you want to add different music or remove that for a video later on if you do the twitch vod track it has no music in your vod and then also you don't have to deal with copyright issues then there's more to that but we will get to it in a moment so moving on to our video tab we have like i said i have the 1080p on the canvas which is what our screen on our OBS is going to be. That is set to 1080p. And then our output is set to also 1080p. And we're running 60 FPS. I used to run 50, but I've come to realize there is no real difference in performance on them both. I just run 60 anymore now. Then on to our advanced settings. Always, always, always be sure you are running an above normal. That fixes a like 90% of your oddly caused issues with OBS when it comes to encoding is because you're not an above normal and it's doesn't know where the computer itself does not know where the process should be and it just shoves it to the bottom. So always run above normal. Then all the rest of this is default. I haven't touched any of the rest of this. So now moving on to the audio, give me one second and we're going to be pulling up the advanced audio properties. All you do to pull this up. So as I said, I've got the weird OBS setup, so I'm not going to be showing you. I'm going to just tell you how. So if you look at your audio mixer, you'll see the three dots at the end of like your mic or something. It doesn't matter which one you click. It's still going to pull up the same screen. Click the three dots, hit advanced audio properties at the bottom. And that'll pop up this window. So as you can see, if I'm looking at this, you can see my alerts, my mic, my music and my stream audio. And you can see that my alerts are set to track one and then my well, Track one, we'll do it this way. Track one has my alerts, my mic, my stream audio. As I said before, this is my Twitch VOD. So because I do not have the one here, the VOD cannot hear the music. If I had a one here, if I had the checkbox here, the the VOD will have my music. So you need to be sure you set that. Then Twitch, uh, then channel two is my stream. So it hears all four, it hears the music, it hears the stream audio, it hears my microphone, and it hears the alerts. Then, as I said before, Twitch, uh, not Twitch, for the recording end, the recording cannot hear Twitch uh, track one and two because, like we said it before, it's listening to channel track three and four. And track three is my mic, and track four is my audio, which allows me to do the really nice audio editing on the um, video side. So due to that, that just makes life a lot easier. And then finally, and is we're going to be going over multi-streaming. So how I do it is I run through a plugin. Um, I think it's called multi REMP, no RPMS or something. A name that I cannot remember. Okay, so here it is. And I will be leaving a description. I will be leaving a link in the description for this uh, plugin. Um, so, but as you can see, I have my kick and my YouTube on here. And if I go to add new target, you can see the name of the target, which is what the kick is here. We'll just do this so you can see it a little bit better. You put in your server key and then you, well, I mean your server and then your server key. You do not need to do the username and password. And then you can do right here, I recommend always doing the encoder the same as OBS. So anything you set for your streaming encoder inside the OBS settings, it's going to run the same here. And then if you want it to start, like say if I wanted kick to start and uh, not YouTube when I hit the start streaming button and I want to have to manually hit YouTube, I'll go into kick and I will set this. So the second this is checked, when I hit the start streaming button on OBS, it starts it uh, on the kick stream and the other and the Twitch stream as well. But if I leave it unchecked, it does not. And I'd have to manually hit the start here. 
I believe that's everything we have uh, need to go over. If there is more you want to know, uh, leave a like, comment below and I will do some research into it and I will try to figure it out. And if I do, I will probably make another video on it. If you did enjoy, just hit the like button. I do appreciate it and it helps me know that if you enjoyed and then hit the subscribe button. I don't do just these kind of videos. This channel is a hobby post. I really post whatever I'm feeling at the time, anything from the FPS game to the reaction video to the funny moments video to the stream vod um or tutorial videos like this and encoding so if you do enjoy and you those trick your interest hit the subscribe and check out the channel as always though hope you guys did enjoy and i'll see you in the next one peace out